Good morning. Welcome here to St. John's United Methodist Church. In the name of God, our Father, Jesus' His Son, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, as we gather to praise and worship and bear witness to our faith. It is good to be here together. Uh, I want to thank you. Uh, past weeks have been very difficult. I recognize that. Uh, you have sacrificed significantly the the coming together and gathering physically for the good of our community and for our most vulnerable. And I want to thank you for that. Uh, we are here now and we're able to gather and we're able to worship. And that is a good and right thing. Uh, and we do that with joy this morning. So thank you for your diligent sacrifice uh, for the good of others. That is a testament of love. As we gather this morning, I want to uh, point out a few quick announcements. Uh, one thing that we often look forward to each year are little calendars. We have the, the pocket calendars and the small wall calendars from uh, uh, the local funeral homes. They are available and they're on tables in the narthex. So if you'd like to pick one of those up, they are available for you today. Uh, we have uh, two excellent Bible studies that are ongoing and available, uh, Tuesday morning and Wednesday evening. Uh, so there's further information about that on our website and in our Cornerstone e-newsletter. Uh, these are great opportunities to strengthen and inform us in our faith. So I encourage you uh, uh, to check those out and if able to participate and grow together. We're here we're ready, we want to experience God, and we trust that as we gather, God is in our midst. So I ask you to quiet your hearts now and take in the beautiful sounds of our Genesis bells as we prepare to worship.
so nice to be able to say this again. Will you please stand and join with me in our call to worship? Holy God, as the obligations of the world press upon our lives, call us into Christ's way of life. As the words and acts of others trouble our minds, lead us into Christ's vision for life. As the cries of the outcast, poor and oppressed, weigh on our hearts, free us for lives of compassion and service. Prepare our hearts, Lord, as we worship you now. Fill us with your spirit and truth. Amen. And will you now join with me as we, pray, as we uh, affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. What a joy it is to hear our bells ring this morning. Thank you so much. Our Old Testament lesson is from the book of Jonah, the third chapter, verse, selected verses this morning. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a very large city. 
It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word. We often sing the song, Let There Be Peace on Earth, and yet we seem to forget the next part of the song that says, and let it begin with me. As we go to God in prayer this morning, let's pray for peace for sure, but let's also ask God to help us so that we are able to serve as instruments of his peace. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in the morning when we rise and in the night when we lay down and all the moments in between, we know that you are there. You are waiting for us to look for you. You're waiting for us to make time for you. Often we're too busy. And even though we know that you call us to be still, we find it very difficult. God, we need you to teach us how to be still and to know you. So right now, in this holy place and time, we want to sit quietly and listen for you to speak to us. We know, Lord, that there are many in our church family who are hurting today. We ask that you would hold each one in your strong arms comfort and give renewed strength. We lift up each person on our prayer list and all of those whose names rise silently from our hearts. Lord, we know that often our faith is small, small like the mustard seed, but we also know that you honor our faith, however small it may be. We need your peace. We confess that we find ourselves wondering when the bills will be paid, when the tarot will stop, when the pandemic will end, when peace will come. And we wonder, will it ever? In a world where worry, not peace, prevails, we ask that you would stir up the good news in us again, the good news that Christ has come for each one of us Make this message real, real in our hearts and real in our lives. God, never have we needed your peace more than now. You've promised rest for the weary, victory for the battle-scarred, peace for the anxious, and acceptance for the brokenhearted. Your name is still wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. But we know that peace on earth can only come when hearts find peace with you. So we ask you to fill us with the love of Christ, who poured out his life for us, and help us to pour out our lives for others. It is in his name we pray. Amen. Will you now pray with me our prayer of confession? Lord Jesus, you have called us to be your disciples, to follow you faithfully, to serve others willingly, and to reflect the glory of your good news. We've heard your call, yet often do not listen. We've seen the path you point us toward, yet often choose our own way. We're conflicted and weary. Forgive us, Lord. Strengthen us for faithful obedience. Guide us in your ways such that goodness and mercy will be revealed as your kingdom is extended to all. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ Jesus calls us to come and draw near to him to experience the goodness of God and the peace that passes all 
understanding. I invite you to experience and to extend that peace now as you share the peace of Christ with each other. May the peace of Christ be with you. Christ Jesus proclaimed that the time is fulfilled. The good news of God's kingdom has come. In response to Christ's call on our lives, let us offer our service and our gifts to our Lord. As a reminder, we have many ways that we can give back to God here through our service, through faithfully serving uh, Christ here at St. John's. We can do that through our gifts and our offerings, which can go uh, electronically. They can be placed in plates that are back in the narthex, or they can be mailed in to us. I want to thank you for your faithfulness in serving God and giving back to God through your gifts and offerings. Let us pray. Amazing God, for the blessing of your Son and the abundance of your gifts, we give you thanks. May our offerings today proclaim your good news and extend the healing and hope of Christ to a hurting and weary world. Amen. Now may we join together in the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Throughout Jesus' earthly ministry, there were all kinds of questions about who he was. Wherever he went, Jesus faced questions regarding his identity and mission, questions about who sent him, questions as to whether he was the one, the one who would restore Israel's fortunes and hopes. Now, in our world today, I believe there are many people including those of us who profess faith in him, who have similar questions about Jesus. They've heard stories, they've gotten bits and pieces of information from a variety of sources, ranging from scripture to pop culture. 
yet questions remain. So over the next few weeks, we're going to explore readings from the Gospel of Mark as we consider who is this Jesus. So this morning, I invite you to listen to our Gospel reading as we hear Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. We trust this is the word of God for the people of God. Give thanks to God for his holy word. Amen. The time has come. Preparations have taken place. The groundwork is laid. And now is the time to bring forth God's desired restoration and reconciliation with humankind. The kingdom, God's kingdom, is at hand. Let's go. That's the sense that I get as I hear the opening verses of our gospel reading today. Jesus is on the move. He's getting down to critical business. This is important stuff. This is not run-of-the-mill work that Jesus is engaging in. We're talking about the sole purpose for his earthly life kind of like the long-anticipated performance of a band or symphony, or perhaps the lead-up to the big game, which occurs in precisely 14 days, 9 hours, and about 5 minutes, if anyone out there is counting. Similar to any keystone event, the significant preparations that are needed are now completed for this mission on which everything hinges. It's time to get to work. And it's no surprise that Jesus approaches his mission with urgency and with focus. Urgency and focus. Those characteristics are hallmarks of Jesus' life and work. Hallmarks that are particularly emphasized in Mark's gospel. Always on the move and always focused on extending the hope and redemption that God's kingdom ushers in. That's what the first eight chapters of Mark's gospel focuses on almost completely. It illustrates powerfully how Jesus was laser focused on the task at hand. See, for his mission to be successful, people near and far needed to see and hear what God was doing. And they needed to see that shifts would be required. Now, one shift that was required was repentance. John the baptizer's message was fully aligned with Jesus. All people, all people, Jewish folk and Gentile folk, they needed to recognize their mistakes and shift their hearts to a dependence on God's grace. Laws, sacrifices, rituals, all that stuff isn't bad. However, they cannot save or restore. Only God can. 
turning from sinful ways to God's good ways is needed. Recognizing sin and yielding one's heart to God is an essential shift that is required of all. Now, as hearts are yielded to God's good ways, another shift will occur. We will perceive a call to follow the one that God sent. A call to follow Jesus, the Christ, the Lord of all. We hear that today. Our reading tells us of two sets of brothers that heard the call to follow, to drop everything and follow Jesus, leave what they knew and follow the Christ such that the skills and aptitudes and experiences that they had had up to that point would be transformed to proclaim and extend the kingdom of God. This was a significant shift and likely an intimidating one, a shift that would be confusing at times, challenging what they thought they knew, what they thought they knew about God and the way God works in the world. The confusion and challenges that came would often result in missteps and mistakes on the part of those four brothers. Yet, They followed, they followed with focus and steadily increasing urgency. They yielded to Jesus and through relationship with Jesus, they changed the world. Now, I suspect all of that sounds pretty good to us, perhaps a bit irrelevant, yet good. I mean, after all, moving with urgency Well, no one is sure what that really even looks like right now, are we? Dropping everything and getting back to what we had been doing as Christ's church here, getting back to our schedule, getting back to our Sunday routine, what? I mean, yes, we're here and that's a great thing, but it isn't normal. And we wonder if that's going to happen anytime soon. We want to get back to our services. We want to get back to our singing. All of that sounds so good. We want to go. We want to get back to that. We've wanted that for months now, right? For many of us, we give anything to get back to that, wouldn't we? Well, Perhaps that's the point that we're missing. Jesus said, stop, drop, drop your nets, drop what's in your hands, drop your schedules, drop your plans, drop your routines. Follow me. Follow me. Do not hesitate. Do not turn back. Urgently follow me forward as I transform your very lives. Even in the midst of a pandemic and the start, stop, start, stop of ministry that COVID has caused, I believe there are pictures of Christ urgently calling his followers forward. After all, we've seen the challenges that are ever present in this world. We've seen the increasing income inequality in our country as the gap between those who have and those who don't has consistently widened. We've seen how racism is real, a persistent plague on our country and world. We've seen how many are eager for any sign of hope of real hope, real healing and redemption available through Jesus, yet haven't experienced the goodness and grace that he offers. We've seen all this and many more things, and we know that God is calling us forward 
Is the picture still cloudy? Yes, it is. We see in a mirror dimly, the Apostle Paul said that many centuries ago, yet we know we're called forward. We also know that shifting, dropping plans and following Christ forward, well, that's hard. It's hard work, much harder than we often realize. We have little appetite or energy for shifts and new ways forward, at least if you're anything like me. That's not very high on my list of favorite things. Urgent calls to change and to shifting forward typically yield half-hearted responses at best. Well, dear friends, I hope you hear this. God can do more with your half-hearted response than you can ever imagine. A bit earlier, we heard a passage from Jonah today where Jonah was called to proclaim good news in Nineveh. In Nineveh, a city that we're told was a three-day journey to walk across. Now, even after the great fish encounter, Jonah could only muster up the heart to take a one-day walk into the city. His response wasn't even half-hearted. It was one-third hearted at best. Yet God used that effort. Hardened hearts of the Ninevites were softened. A major city experienced the grace of God and was saved. Imagine how much more God can do with our half-hearted response today. See, I believe God's people, the people of St. John's Ivyland are being urgently called forward to extend open arms and serving hands such that lives are transformed through Christ in new ways. Those ways aren't all crystal clear at the moment, yet I believe they will be revealed in the shifts brought about by the difficult times we've experienced. I believe that. Our task is to listen for God's voice, to open our hearts to the work that God calls us to, and to follow forward with urgency and focus. Friends, may it be so, and may God use us to change the world. Thanks be to God. Amen.
As a reminder, the, the joys of COVID has altered our procedures a little bit, and our ushers will uh, uh, dismiss you uh, beginning at the rear of the sanctuary, working forward uh, as we conclude our worship uh, in a moment. People of God, hear this. Christ has called you forward with urgency and focus to extend the good news of God with us. Go forth now, renewed by the Holy Spirit, inspired to share the hope of Jesus to all in this weary and hurting world. So now go in the name of God, the Father, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in grace. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.